Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we are working on page two and three of Nutcracker. And I am doing a relatively simple design for this album, uh, predominantly because I wanna get it out soon enough that um, you can take advantage of it before Christmas if you need to get one last gift together. So both page two and three are going to be mirror images of each other. So let's get started. So you're gonna need um, a, one for each page. Four and a half by seven, four and a half by seven. And I, I hadn't put the tape on this yet, so that's gonna slow me down just a little bit, but uh, get this going. So four and a half by seven, score half inch on the four and a half inch side. And then the next thing is this nice large pocket. And this is six and a half, six and a half, by eight, six and a half by eight. You're gonna score a half inch on um, the six and a half inch side. I'm sorry, let me get that straightened out again. You're gonna score a half an inch on the six and a half inch side. Turn it in your paper trimmer and you're gonna score a half inch and then uh, seven, seven and a half. Sorry about that, I was a little bit fumbling there. Okay, so this is gonna make a nice deep pocket. I actually wanna go this way. This is the tape tear tool if you're new here. Um, we sell these in our shop. It was something, oops, this needs to go inside. Something that I created out of necessity. Um, and I honestly, I can't function without it anymore. I've gotten so used to it. Um, I can't pick the scissors up and down. They get stuck on my arthritic knuckles. So this really speeds things up for me. Okay, so this is page two. We're going to install the pocket on the right-hand side of page two, and the flap will go on the left-hand side. So the insert's gonna go in this way, which makes it easier to pull out because the spine's here. So just, again, another uh, opportunity to kind of share with you what my uh, thought process is behind design and location of some of the elements. Whenever I have anything that's going to pull to the left or right, um, I wanna make sure that taking it out of its pocket isn't running me into the spine. I want to go to the free edge of the book. There we go. That's in. And then this is just a simple flap that goes right over the pocket. I think I told you what it was. It's four and a half by seven. to do the same thing on page three. We want to have the pocket going to the outside of the book. I'm using 3 8 inch tape. By the way, if you're new here, um, all of our tutorials are grouped into what we call, our project tutorials are grouped into a playlist. So if you look for Nutcracker, you will find all the whole series for this project under one playlist. The first video is the walkthrough. The second video builds the base album. The subsequent videos add the interactive components and the design layers. If you click on the show more in the description, you'll see a material list. Continue to scroll and you'll see a cut list for the project. And that's how all of them are set up. Try to hopefully make it as easy as possible for you guys to locate the tutorials and the subsequent tutorials that are created page by page. In this case, because these are mirror images, there'll be two pages on that video. If they had two different interactive elements, then I would have um, a video for page two and a separate video for page three. And that just makes it so that you're not looking halfway through a video trying to find the next page. Hopefully that makes sense to you. 
I used to do really long videos and get three or four pages in a video, but then you have to know, you know, where, what to fast forward through on what you've already built. Oops, I almost put that on the wrong side. This should go on the left hand side. So hopefully it makes it easier to use and it certainly saves me time uploading smaller videos. I do all that processing here at home and so I don't have a commercial pipeline to the internet. So smaller videos work out better for me as well. I'm always looking for suggestions. If there's something that you guys would like to see more of, uh, let me know in the comments. I try to do everything I can to accommodate those. Suggestions. Okay, let's get this in. Oops. My goodness. It was sticking to me. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to pull them both back in real quick. Now we're going to add a magnet to keep this all closed. I like to use 5 8 inch tape uh, to cover my magnet up so it softens the edges a bit. There's a magnet on the other side right here. So it just sort of jumped to it. So I'm going to leave it right there and cover it. One of the things to consider when you're doing a pocket like this and a flap is the flap has to overlap this pocket enough to reach far enough to cover the magnet and have some leftover. Now when I open it, you'll see what I mean. So I wanna make sure that this magnet is placed such that it's overlapped. I can still get my designer paper in without leaving that magnet exposed. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. And we'll see if, I don't think there's an, oh no, there's nothing on the page behind it yet. So I'm just, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm just going to try to make it consistent. I'm going to move it down just a bit. Straighten that out. These are 3 8 inch magnets, often referred to as small, basic gray, small, 3 8 inch magnets. It'll be in the material list if you check it out under the description. Okay, that's it. Okay, so I like this one. So this is going to be kind of my green layout. This is from the 12 by 12 collection pack. And yes, I inked it. So we're going to set this one aside, focus on this one. Are you viewers um, in UK? Um, we just recently started, um, you know, trying to work with um, Claire Chevelle. So if you're in the UK, Claire Chevelle has her own shop and she definitely carries Graphic 45. I think she does Stamperia too. So if you like the projects that you see here on our channel, but you live in the UK and can't buy from us, uh, give Claire Chevelle a shout out. And if you leave me a message, and she's, um, my creative spirit is her, her YouTube channel. Um, if you need further contact information, you can't find her, just leave me a, a note in YouTube and I will send you some links to get you in touch with her. So yes, and if you do use Claire, just let her know we sent you. There you go. Now this one is gonna be color block. So I'm gonna add the red first and then I'm gonna trim this down to fit. And I already inked it, so that's good. <clears throat> I don't know. I think, I don't know. I have to look at, I'm not sure if this is from the eight by eight or 12 by 12. It looks kind of small, so it's probably the eight by eight. This is 12 by 12.
but it really doesn't matter. I mean, it's all just scale, so it would just be a smaller scale. Okay, so now we're going to add this. This is from the 12 by 12. I liked the bigger dots, especially since this is so tight pattern-wise. Okay, we'll add a little ink here. Do a quick dry fit. Dry fit just means I'm testing it before I put any glue on it. Sorry about that. It's about that time when everybody starts walking their dog, so she gets engaged. Okay. Get up that extra little bit of glue. Lovely, lovely. Okay, now on from the cut apart page, I got these two little precious elements, which I love. <sighs> it's an L and an N. So this is M for mouse, and this is N, I think, for Nelly. Is that her name? These are going to go right here on this, um, the red tape. So it kind of looks like a banner underneath it. Excuse me. So the first thing I'm going to do, and of course it's from the 12 by 12 collection, it's cut apart, is I'm going to back this with black cardstock and um, and then it, install it uh, centered on this strip. So I'm going to take a minute and do that. And then also while I'm away, I am going to come up with what is going to go here on the inside. And then I'll tell you what the insert size is. Okay. We're back and we are going to finish up um, lining the inside of page two and three. So I've chosen uh, to continue the pattern here. So this is from the 12 by 12. And I think this is too. Can you double check the scale? No, it's not. So the words um, are from the eight by eight. So this is gonna go right here and slide slightly into the pocket. And I like to leave my leading edge, the edge that I'm going to be pushing under the pocket without glue. So if I have to back it back out, I don't leave a trail and glue my pocket shut. So again, the plaid, 12 by 12. And the words are from the 8 by 8. I also, when you have the leading edge without glue, um, you don't have to work so hard to get it into the pocket because it's not grabbing before you're ready. Okay, that goes in. Again, this is from the 12 by 12. It looks like it's ready to go. I mentioned in one of the other videos that the next project on deck is Graphic 45, Tea, Alice, with, Tea with Alice, or I can't even remember the name of it, but you guys know what I'm talking about, Tea Time or Tea with Alice. That's next. And that will probably be the last project for this year. Okay, there we go. Now I've made a very large insert that's gonna go in this pocket. And um, this is a bifold. So you're going to need uh, one piece that's eight and a half by six. Eight and a half by six, you're going to score a half inch. The second piece is just six by eight. And you're going to uh, put them together on the hinge. That's going to become the insert. I haven't chosen the papers for that yet. I'm going to come back to that in a little bit. Let's go ahead and finish. Um, I went ahead and did. Um, all the A-sides while I was away because it's just a mirror image. Let's go ahead and put our liner in. There we go. 
little blob of glue. There we go. So page two, page three. Then we're going to add um, this piece, and I'm going to center it on the stripe. And I'm just going to overlay them so that there's a little less interference when the pages are together. Sometimes, if you have them on opposite sides and you close, actually, there won't be any interference. There would be if it was opening the opposite direction. Um, so these should just go together real easy and not get stuck on each other. So let's go ahead and center them. I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna measure this out. So this should be at three and a half. I'm gonna put a little dot here on the center line. I'll do the same thing over here. It's gonna be at three and a half. Okay, that's just going to give me a little reference on how to install this. And it looks like two-thirds is going to be covered in glue with this edge being left clean. And I'm just eyeballing it. But if you're not comfortable with that, hold it in place, open the flap, and draw a line. And I'll show you, show you what I mean on the, on the other side. Okay. There we go. That looks pretty straight to me. Okay, we'll need to put uh, just a little bit of decorative paper here. So probably gonna do that offline. Um, if I can, I'm gonna find something red. I just noticed it wasn't straight. It needs to come down a little, this corner. Sometimes when you see the flip side, it's much more obvious to tell if it's straight or not. No patterns confusing your eyes. Okay, so that's done. And then, so I thought that was in for Nelly, but it's in for Nutcracker. What a dum dum, huh? <laughs> I just kind of slipped my mind. I'm going to flip that open, see if it looks straight, and that's off a little so I can adjust it. There we go. Looks good now. Okay, so page two and three. And again, for page three, I made this large insert. It is one piece is eight and a half with a score at the half inch line, and the other one is six by eight. That's going to go in there. So we'll have those nice big inserts and then I'm going to cover those with paper after I get through with some of the other pages and see what's left behind. So that's page two and three. Be back soon. <laughs>